and grab some food. I wasn't going to be able to do this live on an empty stomach. I got to smash a protein shake real quick. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just wanted to do a quick run and introduction, then we can pick up on the conversation that we just left off on. But we're going to be talking about DeFi institutions, connections, making, I mean, the connections that I'm going to throw at you guys today are absolutely mind boggling. And somehow, some way, shape or form, my thought process and Mr. Aqua's thought process always like full circle somehow without us even talking and connects. So I don't know, man, if you wanted to start today, kind of talk about that, the whole supernova thing and what you were discussing, and maybe that'll feed into what you wanted to share. But then I want to go into documents showing everybody that financial institutions are 110% interested. They're coming. There's proof in the pudding. I'm going to share and lay that all out on the table. So many video clips, documents, full on connections and breakdowns that myself and Mr. Aqua. And today we have Kevin joining us. I think actually, look at this. Check this out. Mr. Man's going to be joining us today, which is dope. Yeah. Hey. yeah. What's up? Everyone? Um, What's up? So we have a lot to unpack for you all today. So we do appreciate you all for tapping in. Do us a favor. If you're new to the CypherX platform, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe. If you don't follow Mr. Aqua on the X space, make sure you go give him a follow. If you don't follow, follow Mr. Man on the X space, go give him a follow as well. Um, and then Kevin, I don't know if you have a, of a, of a X, but do you have an X, bro? I do have an X, but I'm not really you don't on, be it. on it. Huh? Yeah, you don't be on it. All right. No. So anyways, um, so we're going to jump in today. You guys are going to, you know, you guys are going to get a treat. Lots of insights. Again, no personal opinions at the end of the day. We might throw some personal opinions out there, but a lot of the information that we're going to share today is going to be research, documents, panel discussions, perspectives from large financial institutions and individuals with many more credentials than you and I. Again, showing you all a level of research that never really reaches the mainstream. No hopium price predictions and unrealistic expectations that we're shouting and touting out. No, really diving in and taking a look at what the financial institutions are doing, the connections that are being made behind the scenes, trying to piece things together in a way that's easily understandable for you viewers. So again, we do appreciate you all for tapping in. But yeah, so, all right. So while he's figuring that out, I'm going to roll into the topic in which I wanted to discuss and talk to you guys about, which was just showing you all that these financial institutions are 110% interested in adopting these digital assets, that this whole network and connection of organizations joining up and teaming up with each other, it's not by accident, okay? It is 110% on purpose, and it's only going to continue to scale. So let's pull this up real quick. Let's see if we can get him back on the call. All right, so first I'm going to share two documents with you guys just to kind of start everybody's perspective, showing you guys some institutional perspectives about this digital asset landscape that are never going to reach the mainstream, and then just kind of touch on the growth that they're expecting in the DeFi ecosystem over the next couple of years, just to show everybody how early we are, okay? And that's my main point here. My main, again, focal point is to get you guys to see that we're early. Don't let anybody tell you that we're not. To get you all to see that financial institutions are 110% here and show you the connections to prove to you all that that is to be the case. I'm gonna play some video clips. I'm gonna run through some fundamentals and I'm just gonna fluently go through all of the slides that I have to share with you all. So first, let's just show you guys real quick. This is a FinTech 2025 plus report. I like this date because I've mentioned multiple times to individuals on the internet. Based off the research that I've done, I think that the massive bull market cycle that everybody's expecting isn't going to happen. Unfortunately, just my personal opinion based off my research till like summer 2025 rolling into 2026. That's my personal opinion. A lot of people think it's gonna happen this year. Some people think it's gonna happen beginning of 2025. I think that the geopolitical landscape is only gonna to continue to escalate, which we know fear, uncertainty and doubt and war scares tend to weigh on risk assets. You know, to each his own, we see some type of environment unfolding where we could see some nice bullish price action. Again, I'm not against that. If it happens, great, I'll take advantage. But just based off the research that I've done, I'm talking about trillions of trillions of trillions of dollars flooding in. Um, I think that that's going to really start to come into fruition, like rolling into 2026 as we get closer to 2030. I'm not knocking another bull market cycle. It would be lovely if that happened. But I'm talking about trillions of dollars flooding into the space where we see 
like a 15, 20, 30 trillion dollar market cap probably is not going to happen, realistically speaking, until 2026 and beyond. Right. That's just my personal that's, opinion. That's what I was saying, too. I was saying, you know, I don't believe none of that is going to happen. I don't believe the price movement that everybody wants is going to come until we get some rules and regulations for the institutions yeah. to follow. So, you know, again, that's up for debate, though. That, that's not my purpose here. My purpose here is just to identify that in a lot of their documents, they pay attention to dates as well. And a lot of their dates mention the dates 2025, 2026. OK, um, so just keep that in mind. Again, that's not necessarily my personal opinion. It's my personal opinion attached to research. Right. I'm not just waking up like, oh, I'm going to tell people 2025. The reason why I have that opinion is because of all the documents that I read. So, you know. Um, all right, so scrolling down here, I just wanted to show you guys how early we are. That's the point of this document. It's from um, Convera. If you guys want to just go research the organization Convera, who they are, what they give customers over 26,000 clients worldwide, a better way to move money, right? So they're integrated with large financial institutions, you know, the biggest names. Just go look at all their clients, all their customers. And they said in this report down here, let me find it for you guys. It says right here, um, this little tiny infograph where it mentions that they think that 22 million users are going to come into the DeFi ecosystem by 2028, right? And we know as of time of recording this video that only 7.5 million people in the world have ever utilized DeFi, right? And we showed a document on our last call. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but we showed a document on our last call proving that you guys can go look at that statistic on your own. Roughly about five to 7.5 million people have ever utilized DeFi, the DeFi niche, decentralized, you know, projects, so on and so forth. And so if they're projecting 22 million by 2028, that's a significant growth curve. OK, so just keep that in mind. I'm attempting to show you guys why I have a perspective that short term. Yeah, we could see some more chop choppiness. We could see some more downside price action. I will gladly take advantage of that right? If we get some more discounts, but I'm trying to get you guys to see that long-term, the trend is to the upside. So it says here, additional interest is rising in DeFi platforms, which enable direct financial interactions without intermediaries to reduce costs and improve efficiency for traditional financial players. According to statistics, the DeFi market revenue is projected to hit 26 billion this year with an annual growth rate of 9% expected to reach 37 billion by 2028, where DeFi users are expected to contribute to an average of $1,300 in annual revenue in 2024. The number of DeFi users expected to grow to 22 million. Now it says here, tokenization and crypto innovation breaks tradition to help traditional banks and market center or markets enter the digital currency and DeFi world, specialized service providers have merged these include tokenization platforms, companies offering crypto as a service and hybrid solutions, blending DeFi with traditional mechanisms. So we can see here in the text that traditional TradFi systems are attempting to merge with these DeFi systems. And I'm going to show you guys why that is, it's because they know that they can earn a much higher yield on their assets, whether it's through DeFi, whether it's through investing in these cryptocurrencies and going through a bull market cycle. I'm going to physically show you guys that they are doing that. Organizations like SBI drafted a report this year, released it to the general public where they made 172% in Q2 in this market, right? Here's another document giving some institutional insights. So it says here, this is the document. If we scroll up, if you guys ever want to look it up yourselves, it is digital assets by TradTech. And it literally says on the top, from crypto adoption to a tokenized future, exploring blockchain's impact on asset management and traditional finance, right? And we come down here, just reading through some of these perspectives. The extent of these allocations, talking about allocations into digital assets and cryptocurrency, comes as a surprise to some. The majority of respondents, 35% of these individuals that were surveyed in this report, allocated between 11 and 20% of their portfolios to crypto assets, while a noteworthy 5% have already committed 30% or more. Our research suggests this upward trajectory is likely to continue, potentially ushering in a new era of mainstream institutional crypto adoption. That is a super bullish statement right there. However, the path to full-scale adoption is not without challenge. And I'm actually going to touch on that, again, reiterating to people that the challenges are not over. We still might see a massive purge of bullcrap crypto projects in this space. We might go through another collapse of an exchange. Who knows? Don't just ignore that. 
I always tell people that I personally have capital on the sidelines ready to deploy in case we see another purge like we did back in FTX and we see another market crash. It's just logical to do that. As an investor, it's something smart to capitalize on. That's how money is made. Money's made when everybody else is selling, you're buying up that discount. That's bottom line. Obviously, of course, logical one-on-one -on -one how to make money in the stock market, right? Come on now. So why would you not look forward to that? However, the path to full-scale adoption is not without challenge. So I like that part. Then it comes down here and it says, the appetite for crypto assets is undeniable. And the landscape is being reshaped by a maturing of the regulatory environment and a focus on data-driven decision-making. This potent combination paves the way for a significant shift in institutional adoption. So the reason why I'm reading this from for you guys is so you can see that institutions are 110% interested. Here are some perspectives from big players in the game. This is Andres, I'm not going to butcher his last name, F, head of digital assets at BBV, uh, BBVA Asset Management. He said, I would have expected this to be a bit lower, but the results indicate an institutional adoption of crypto. I think we have to split two different concepts. One is cryptocurrencies in general terms and other blockchain technology for tokenization. As I say, this shows the technology is being adopted, but in the first case, I imagine it is blockchain technology that is being adopted for the most part for now, right? Then this individual right here, Gene Mark Benofos, managing partner Tell, uh, he goes on to say, although I think it looks high right now, we could expect to see the percentages increase in the future. So remember, only 11% of industry participants surveyed, 11 to 20% have digital assets allocated to their portfolio right now. And he literally just said in his response to this, that although these look high right now, he expects that this is going to increase in the future, which again, just solidifies my perspective that long term, these institutions have the same exact thought process. Short term, okay, cool. We might deal with some more bullshit. But long term, if you understand the power of what's about to happen, you understand that these short-term price fluctuations are nothing. They're mere spectacles in the, the grand scheme of things, okay? And then I'll read you one more. It says, with the additional benefits of digital assets and that they provide to portfolio diversification, which I'm going to show you guys again, physical proof that financial institutions are benefiting right now from crypto. It's not surprising to see a majority of these funds allocating 11 to 20% into cryptocurrencies, right? As the market continues to mature and adoption continues to grow around the world, I expect allocations to increase as more funds add digital assets to their portfolios. This is coming from the CEO of Amber Data. These are all perspectives that the mainstream will probably never show you. They're going to constantly be covering all the bull crap that's going to distract you. So I've shown you guys that adoption is set to continue to grow based off of projections. And we know where we're at now, 7.5 million individual users in DeFi looking at about 22 million according to this projection by 2028. We know now the perspective of some financial institutions and leading organizations in this space based off of these documents. Now let me show some other stuff with you guys. Okay, this is where the rabbit hole is gonna start to get interesting and we're gonna start to play some video clips. So let's find, it's gonna be this one. I have so many tabs open. All right, you guys can see this tab, right? Yep, got you, brother. Let me get some water. Let's do a shout out real quick. Let's do a break. Let's do a uh, a what's up, everybody. Shout out to the 1,100 people listening. You guys are tapped in. We're sharing perspectives from these large financial institutions, showing you guys that these connections exist. Mr. Aqua touched on how Bitcoin is not going away, how the mainstream media makes you think it's going away. But in reality, they're creating a new electrical grid infrastructure and they're utilizing Bitcoin mining at the forefront of that. So don't let them distract you. Um, and so now I'm going to touch on, I just showed you guys, DeFi is going to grow. I'm going to show you guys these large institutions of what me and Aqua were telling you guys to pay attention to DeFi because these senators, these, pol these politicians, these individuals, again, that are building out this new infrastructure, don't think it's a conspiracy theory because you're not educated on it. They've already built the infrastructure that you operate on now. Don't think they're not about to do it, you know, make another one. They are integrating and partnering with these organizations in the digital asset landscape in which you can invest in right now. And I'm going to show you that they're telling you this. Okay. So we're going to start here. This is an event that's happening um, in November of this year, 2024. You can see it's called the Definitive, Definitive Conference for Institutional Crypto. Okay. Over 250 plus institutions are going to attend, 50 speakers, 1,000 attendees. So you can see this is probably not some just, you know, 
random Joe Schmo going to be at this event? You can look at the partners list. You can see that it's, and for in fact, large financial institutions. Um, to save time, I won't go through that. You guys can take it upon yourself yourself, but look at the presenting sponsors. You got the HBAR Foundation. Hmm. You got Soy. Hmm. Right. I want to focus my attention on Soy because everybody, there's a lot of mainstream influencers that focus on HBAR. So I want to divert everybody's attention to one of these other DeFi protocols like Soy and show you guys some connections that because everybody's so fixated on XRP, everybody's so fixated on these ISO tokens, they're missing out on other opportunities. And Soy, in my personal opinion, again, not financial advice, is one of them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So first, I'm always going to show you guys physical proof that we do capitalize on moves like this in the CypherX community. And I'm going to explain why. I always like to give a reason why. So here is a... DCA level report that I give to the private Cypress community every other week or every week, whenever I see fit that I'm dollar cost averaging into the market, I let my community know. And it always tends to, you know, benefit, right? Not only because I'm an investor who knows how to dollar cost average improperly, but I would like the individuals that read my information to benefit as well, right? So Saturday, August 3rd, I mentioned to the community based off of something that I've been following in developments in the soy network, massive things, breakthroughs happening all this year. I've been dollar cost averaging in a soy. You can see on Saturday, August 3rd, when the market was down, I mentioned to the community that I was dollar cost averaging into soy at roughly about 65 cents, but I mentioned to them that I would prefer it to be below 50 cents, right? So I just wanted to show you guys physical proof. I'm not talking about this project to talk about it and like, not be an investor in it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm an investor in it. So why was I telling people that I was investing is because I paid attention to this random ass price spike that happened back in the beginning of July. If I move this indicator, you can see right here, soy price jumped from 57 cents all the way to a dollar 35 in less than one four hour candlestick. And I've been tracking soy. That's a 132% move in one four hour candlestick, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, right? But you didn't see anybody bandwagoning soy or talking about it like the way that they did with XRP when this most recent court case thing came into fruition and XRP jumped from what, 44 cents to 65 cents. Oh, big whoop, 20, 30%. Look at this. This is a project that literally just a couple of days ago spiked up 132% and you barely see anybody talking about it. I'm going to show you that these large organizations for a fact know about this project, okay? So the reason why I was telling my community that I was buying some of it is because I had alarms set at the day where that spike was initiated on the market. So you can see here, there was an open order filled because we know these large organizations, these hedge funds, these asset managers, they most likely move these markets with open orders, right? We can understand that where they're going to buy from is going to be at a lower area and the next area where they're going to buy from is going to be at a discount. It's either going to be at a lower area where they bought from or at a discounted area where they bought from. So I set an alarm where they previously bought from. Well, you can see looking down here at the date, Saturday, August 3rd, my alarm was hit. So price came back to that area of interest, right? Where they had previously bought from. You can see the date. I'm not making any of this up. That's the same date that I messaged the community and said, look, you know, 50 cents is what I would like it to be below. Okay. And then boom, I plug some capital in. And right now, soy from that day is sitting over 80% in profit. So I'm just showing you guys again that there's other opportunities. That's why I'm breaking this down. So that way you're not just like, oh, he's just talking about these projects and I'm never going to profit from them. I'm trying to explain to you guys how I make money in this market. It's not financial advice. I'm just showing you guys that you're dealing with somebody who actually analyzes things. You see no magic indicators on my charts. You see no magic Fibonacci's. Everything that I just explained, explained to you on how I profited from plugging money into this market, even if it's temporary, is all based off of logic. Okay. Now, the reason why I even started focusing on soy is because of all the things that have happened. Okay. So here, and this is going to full circle, this is a um, this is a piece from the CEO of Zodiac Custody, something that they said the other day. And I'm not going to read the whole thing and bore you guys to death. But Kate Cooper went on to say that they are working together with, you can see Zodiac Custody's name right here, making institutional entry into the market safer and simpler than ever before. And I pay attention to this stuff. So I know financial institutions are coming because they're attempting to build out the, infra the infrastructure where institutions are comfortable to come into this space. Okay. And so with all of that in mind, 
heading back to this, look at what I have here for you guys. So do you remember back in the end of June, June 26, 2024, Soy partnered with Copper to do what? To attract institutional finance. So remember, I just read to you a piece from the custody of Zoidia Custody Australia saying that they're making institutional entry into this market safer and simpler than ever before. Soy partnered with Copper. Okay, let's go over to the next fundamental piece to show you guys. What is Copper? If you're not too familiar with what Copper is, here's a screenshot of their website. They are building out the institutional standard for digital assets. Oh, and Copper just partnered with what? <laughs> Soy. Okay, this is all recent, June 20, you know, 2024. This is not old information. Here we can also see who is Copper partnered with? Zoidia Custody. Copper building out an institutional standard for digital assets. You can see Zoidia Custody literally telling everybody that they're making institutional entry into this space seamless and easy. And I just showed you guys, right? Look at this. Zoidia Custody partnered with Copper. Copper is partnered with who? Soy. So we now understand, I just showed you guys, these banking institutions will have access to Soy. Okay, this is not, this is not some random game. I'm not saying that they're going to buy it. I'm just trying to show you guys that they're going to have access to these platforms. For people to think that they're not, you're not doing enough research. Now, Zodiac Custody. Zodiac Custody is owned by who? Look at this. They're owned by Standard Charter. Zodiac uh, Custody owns Standard Charter. This is from 23rd of September, so within the last year, right? Now, if you go over to Zodiac Custody's website, this is where it's going to get juicy. We can also see that they are trusted by who? SBI, NAB, Invesco, 21 Shares, Northern Trust. Well, let's tap into SBI just to prove my point and why I'm investing in assets like soy and able to make, you know, sitting in profit right now. I'll be, yeah, I, we could see another market downturn. But let me show you guys this logic, okay? I just showed you guys Standard Charter somehow in some way, shape, or form is interconnected into this web with soy through Zoidia, through copper, through copper and soy, right? Why I'm investing in assets like this is because, again, Zoidia Custody, we know, <clears throat> is trusted by SBI. Look at this. Do you remember July 29th, 2024? I covered this. I talked about this. What did Franklin Templeton and SBI Holdings just announce? They just announced a partnership. And in their partnership, it says right here, the JV will focus on managing digital assets and securities, including tokenization. This area is expected to grow significantly, potentially reaching 16 trillion by 2030. <coughs> Franklin Templeton and SBI Holdings aim to provide Japanese investors <coughs> with access to a diversified range of investment solutions that include emerging assets such as digital assets and cryptocurrencies, right? We know SBI sitting right here, trusted by Zodia Custody. And I already proved the connection with Zodia Custody. I don't need to go back down that with copper and all that stuff and, and soy. I don't want to feel like I'm repeating myself. Okay. So now let's switch over to another network. We know XTC Network is partnered with SBI. Banking Powerhouse SBI commits to empowering XTC. This is a document or a fundamental piece from 2023. So it's within the last year. All right. SBI, what did they just release? This is a report from June 30th, 2024. <clears throat> and if you click down and you go and you read about it, let's find the part where they talk about their returns. This is to prove to you guys that these large organizations know for a fact that they can make much more money in this digital asset ecosystem by investing, by partnering like you guys have seen so far, and by migrating over to this new digital infrastructure. So we're going to command F and we're going to command F crypto, right? Let's spell that properly. All right, so it pops up 13 times in this document, and it says right here, talks about their crypto asset business. Let's zoom in. Again, this is from SBI, who I just showed you guys partner with Franklin Templeton to offer digital assets and cryptocurrencies to their clients, whom I just showed you guys is partnered with uh, Zodia Custody, whom I just showed to you guys is partnered with Standard Charter and Standard Charter, Copper, Copper, Soy, right? You guys, are you starting to see the connections? Okay. This is not by accident, the full circle, what me and Mr. Aka were talking about at the beginning, this new intertwined web that they're creating, this is not by accident. If anybody thinks that this is by accident, you're not, you're not there. You're not there because again, 
you think it's a conspiracy because you haven't done this type of research. This is not random. You cannot make these connections for no reason, right? Look at this, what this says. The crypto asset business primarily consists of crypto asset exchange businesses, which provide crypto asset exchange and traded services. The result of operations of the crypto asset business for the three months ending in June 30th, 2024, were as follows. Revenue increased 172% year on year. This is physical proof that these large organizations are benefiting in terms of percentages that they have never even seen themselves in the traditional financial system. This is groundbreaking because, again, to reiterate what I mentioned in the previous part of the call, is that if SBI knows that it can make 172% in three months, ladies and gentlemen, three months, look at this, 172%. And I just showed you guys soy, look at this. What did soy do with this spike in price? Why did I pay attention to this spike and why did I dollar cost average into soy? Because you can see here from the bottom of this spike, this is 135% gains. This is a financial institution. This is a bank that did this. This is not some fucking retail trader. You understand that, right? Retail traders do not have enough money to do this. Now, I don't know what financial institution made this spike in price on soy, but I'm trying to physically show you guys that 135% pumps in the market do not come from retail. They come from banks. Okay? Okay. All right. Y'all know I'm spitting facts now if you're here again <laughs> and you're not subscribed and you're not tapped into what Cyprex is on. Like, Yo, tap in. You, you know? cooking right now, bro. Keep cooking that sauce. That shit smells bomb, bro. Cook that shit. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Definitely. Man. So, 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 okay. So now that I got everybody's attention, let, let me continue to go down the rabbit hole, you know? So, um, this lady right here. Joyce Lay, I just want to talk about how they've mentioned this stuff. These are all, you know, summits and meetings that you're never going to see. But I tap into LinkedIn. One of the CyberX researchers is always on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is where a lot of good information is at, but not a lot of people are tapped into. So this is from a month ago. And she said, now, granted, remember, I want you to keep in mind, again, something else I'm trying to prove to you guys is that even during these market downturns, the perspective from the institutions behind the scenes has been positive the entire time. So don't let these banks shake you out. So again, you can see that this is from a month ago. I like to make everything make sense. So let me show you guys a month ago where the price action of digital assets was. So we'll go to the total cryptocurrency market cap, which is down today, unfortunately, about 50 billion. Um, but let's go back a month ago. You know, let's go back. Today is what the 9th of August. So let's go back to the 9th of July. So the 9th of July, we can see right here, is roughly around here. Okay. And let's go see what they were saying about the cryptocurrency market back on the 9th of July. So you can see it says it was an incredible, it was incredible, excuse me, to see how much the industry has matured at yesterday's Coinbase Institutional Summit. When I transitioned from private funds to law to crypto startups in 2017, there were very full time there were very few full-time crypto funds. The fast forward to 2024, excuse me, sorry this print so small. Um I was surrounded by navy jackets and fund managers ready to dive deeper into this asset class. And you can see here, she's literally at this meeting, again, a meeting that's never going to reach the mainstream. CNN and Fox News are never going to tell you that this positive event in crypto happened, where she literally open, openly admitted that she was surrounded by hedge funds, asset managers, individuals in this space with much more money than you and I, that again, I've just shown you guys make moves in this market, like the 135% move on soy, like the 172% you know, gains that SBI got. They're, they're coming, people. You understand they're coming. Okay, and People don't even understand what's going to happen in the next couple of years. Okay. Then here, this is a website from MHS Digital Group. It's their homepage. You can read about them. Long story short, they are a digital currency native organization in the emerging technology space, um, asset manager niche kind of sort of, um, dealing with large financial institutions, customers with much more money than you and I. And they put out a report. Okay. And it talks about, this is a report from June, 2024. So again, all updated information. And it talks about how you better get involved or you're going to get left behind. Literally says that. So check this out. Let me just read a couple of snippets. I was not able to highlight this. So let me just find my talking points real quick back on this po on this post. But long story short, it talks about how investors are interested and 
you need to be paying attention. So let's just find it. Let's expect it to chop. Okay, so here it says, it says, in summary, we expect the choppy market to continue in the short term, but the potential for further downwards movements due to crypto specific news, particularly the repayment of Mt. Gox creditors. <coughs> Nevertheless, our conviction leading into the final quarter of this year remains strong. Lower prices provide what we believe to be a fantastic buying opportunity. It literally says that right here. Okay. So I'm trying to show you guys that these organizations, they know. They know. Just like I showed you guys on the X space that back in the bottom of 2022, they were buying up everybody's fear when FTX happened. Okay. And they're going to continue to do that because they know where this market is headed. Then right here, it says, in summary, supply side pressure is expected to keep a lid on the market in the short term. But once that has cleared, we believe the buy side pressure will fast dominate as the FTX recipients and ETF buyers chase limited supply. Coupled with a favorable macroeconomic environment and an increased potential for Trump to win, we expect to see a significant price appreciation and value for crypto in the fourth quarter. Our recommendation, look at this. Okay, again, this is not financial advice. This is coming from this organization and their document to their clients. It says, wow. our, it says our recommendation is to make sure that you are positioned by September to capture this potential value appreciation. Bruh. Yeah. Right? Okay. So uh, again, Bruh. what? I want, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the reason why I'm reading stuff like this is because again, the biases that we accumulate here at CyperX, it's not based off of our own opinions. We do research. The researchers are doing research 24 hours a day. I'm digesting that information, typing out fundamental reports, making analysis about the market. We're not just at CyperX dollar cost averaging into the market for no freaking reason based off of Fibonacci's or magic indicators or random ass bullshit that everybody else is focused on. Nah, we're tapped into this type of stuff. Right. And the reason why we know when to sell, we know when to buy is because we read these reports from these large organizations like it's it's gnarly the information that they put out. So let's continue to, un, you know, to tap in. So, yo, it said, please call if you have any other questions. I'm going to call and be like, hey, yo, what else do y'all know? <laughs> <laughs> uh. So um, me, myself and Mr. Aqua, this is where we're going to kind of transition into another DeFi platform, Velodrome. So myself and Mr. Aqua on like two calls ago, and I think Mr. Mann was possibly on that call as well. We were talking about how these senators, these politicians, they know about DeFi. They know about your ability, like the guy in the Bitcoin video that Mr. Aqua um, just showed you guys. He said at the end of that video that anybody with a small amount of money can now take that money and go earn on it. They can go earn yield. They can go deploy it into DeFi protocols. They can invest in crypto and make significant returns with a little bit amount of money. That for the first time ever is changing course. Okay. And we told you guys that senators, politicians were going to start to pay attention to specifically DeFi. Here, this is a post from Eric Trump. Okay. He literally said at the beginning of this post, I have truly fallen in love with crypto and DeFi. This got 5.2 million impressions, okay? Granted, I've already proven to you guys that only 7.5 million people are invested in DeFi and that according to the report that I showed you guys in the PDF, 22 million individual users are expected to flood over into DeFi by 2028, right? Well, if 5.2 million people viewed this, you can assume that it sparked the interest of at least 100,000 people to some degree to get involved or to get educated. I'm telling you guys, this is only going to continue to develop from a political standpoint. And myself and Mr. Aqua were telling you guys this because we saw that investors or individuals invested in these DeFi platforms were freaking senators. And I'll show you guys that. So again, another, another post recently from Donald Trump Jr. He specifically said, decentralized finance, dang it, what just happened? He said, Decentralized finance is the future. Don't get left behind. He said, he said that on August 7th, 2024. Okay. And I've already shown you all enough proof that these financial institutions know, but they're not here yet. They're not here yet. They're coming. Don't get me wrong. Yo, I have to show you a picture real quick too, because yeah, run it. They, they, you know, Donald Trump, he knows about Bitcoin mining. So this is a picture of Donald Trump. Share it real quick. So and, I can my voice arrest. 
Yeah. Donald Trump, and uh, it says here the the minor execs from Clean Spark and Riot. This is side by side. This is a couple days ago, and not to mention when you go and look at Riot's portfolio, um, and who's who's a holder of their also publicly traded um, stock that you could buy, BlackRock. So, like, bro, I mean, <laughs> they know about all this stuff, bro. They know about it all. Period. Yeah, I mean, I, honest to God, for the sake of the argument, I think anybody at this point that thinks that crypto is a scam or is going away, honestly, at this point is just sad. It's sad that they're living in like pre-2019 era where it's like you're, you can be easily manipulated through misinformation because you weren't really able to do the research. Now, Bro. After 2019, you guys have to understand that we transitioned into a new age and era of information where like information became so much more easily attainable and fact checkable. So it's like, you got to tap in. But so anyways, this, to, to just tap in, because I only have a couple documents left, and then I want to play some video clips backing everything that I'm trying to show you guys. Um, let me share my screen again. Let's continue to roll. Shout out to everybody that's listening. You guys tap in, you know, 1,400 people listening to this call on Friday. Don't forget, every Friday that we can, around 1030 a.m. Pacific, we're going to be on Myself and Mr. Aqua on these Friday calls. I don't know who our guest is going to be every single Friday, whether we have one or not. But today it was Kevin, so I appreciate you tapping in, Kevin, even though myself and Aqua have full on the show today. Um, as always, you guys, many blessings. Thank you guys for tapping in. If anybody wants to tap into DeFi, learn about DeFi, learn how to get their digital assets working for them, you got to give a shout out to the Cyprex team. Visit CypressTrading.com. Full breakdown course from A to Z on how to get your digital assets working for you, how to start earning passive income in this space. Um, the team is, is phenomenal. The communication is, I mean, literally, it's insane how many people are benefiting from stuff that we're putting out at CyberX. It's crazy to see. I mean, we got one dude right now that's about to start teaching classes in CyberX that has a, a portfolio that's set to make him, you know, an upwards of six grand per month. That's nuts, <laughs> nuts, you know? So tap in. We're trying to show you guys that it's not just random investors, random people trying to get you guys opinionated about stuff. No, we're dropping real gems. We're dropping real research. And if you want to tap into that and you're done with all the misleading moon boys, you're done with all the outrageous, ridiculous price predictions that have never come into fruition ever since you started coming into crypto and you're actually looking to start gaining and learning and educating yourself about these markets properly, come tap in with us. We'd love to have you. Um, and again, you know, teach his own choice is yours. So let's continue. So show you, showing you guys, remember me and Mr. Aqua were telling you all that these Congress people, right? They were buying up Velodrome way back a couple months ago. So this is from, uh, June, 2024 Congressman Michael Collins from Georgia made a surprising investment in Velodrome. And I want to share this video clip that I found on the internet from a gentleman on YouTube. Um, I'll have to reshare my screen. Let me do that real quick. Uh, a gentleman on YouTube, his platform is called DeFi Dad. So, you know, I'm not going to knock him. Go give him a follow. Shout out to him for ever having this interview, right? Um, he he interviewed some of the core developers from Velodrome. And some of the stuff that they said is very interesting. One of the videos that I wanted to play is that he mentioned that DeFi is not going away. Um, he also mentions in the video that they discussed a system building out Velodrome in such a way where it is the Federal Reserve, where Velodrome holders become their own Federal Reserve, which is what I've tried to reiterate to people that we now have the ability to be our own bank, okay, which is 110% true. If you don't think that your digital assets right now could be earning you an upwards of you know, I, again, I don't know what everybody's working with in capital requirements, but I'm personally in DeFi making over $1,000 a month just off of DeFi. There's people in the Cyprex community right now that are making $600 a month, six grand a month, three grand a month, 100 bucks a month, all just off of DeFi. So it's not a game. And it just backs what this guy said, where he talks about how they built Velo to be like the Fed. And then he also talks about um, how Velo Drum will survive in the future. I don't know if we'll get to that part of the video clip. Uh, but he talks about how they built it in such a way for it to be connected with all of these blockchain networks and how blockchain networks, if they're going to survive in the future, are going to need to be built that way. So let me just play the first two video clips, the one where he talks about how DeFi is not going away. 
The reason why I'm playing that video clip is because that backs everything that I've showed you guys, financial institutions, they know about DeFi, they're earning in this digital asset space. We got people on panel discussions, fundamentals, all showing you all that this is to be the case, okay? Let's listen to what this guy says real quick. And, you know, look at what the, what the outcome of the community sure we don't have a lot of things there. And, you know, today is, of course, another great day for recognizing that, yeah, you know, you keep pushing forward because as much as maybe everybody says, you know, we're f the SEC is going to, you know, come kill us and it's all going to zero. That may not be true. And then on a day like this, you know, you see it, see it validated. Right. And, um, and here we are, um, optimism is growing, you know, we're the, we're the largest protocol on optimism and, uh, you know, everybody says, you know, we're f the SEC is going to, you know, come kill us and it's all going to zero. That may not be true. And then on a day like this, you know, you see it, see it validated. Right. And, um, and here we are, um, optimism is growing, you know, we're the, we're the largest protocol on optimism. And so uh, the reason why I wanted to point that part out is because I don't I don't know about the context of the conversation. I watched this video a long time ago, um, which, again, sparked my interest. But um, what he talks about in the previous conversation is how, you know, there was a lot of regulatory clampdown and crackdown and how Velodrome survived that regulatory crackdown. Right. I don't remember specifically what they were talking about that they did to survive that crackdown, but they survived it. And he just reiterates that. And I think that that's important because again, our focus here at CyberX is to find projects to invest in that are going to possibly survive in this new regulated industry, particularly in DeFi. We know that a lot of these DeFi protocols to some degree, just like a lot of these crypto assets that are a bunch of bull crap and, you know, just a bunch of stupidness, they're going to go away. So here at Cyprex as a team, not only inside the Wealth28 Club, but in the Discord, we try to really focus on doing our research on these projects. Like we got into MAG very early on in the early days, but a lot of us pulled out of our investment because we noticed some red flags on MAG and we were like, nah, that's sketchy. We're not going to get involved in that. And so we try to protect each other, right, by doing research. And so I liked what he said about that, how they survived, you know, whatever regulatory purrs they were going through, um, I guess, when they first got started, when they were talking about this in this uh, breakdown. So let's go to 4115. Uh, let's see, 4115. This is where he talks about them building out Velodrome so that Velodrome holders can be like their own Federal Reserve. Liquidity pools in perpetuity. Um, and we actually designed uh, for V2, and we can uh, get into this later, but we designed a, a system that will actually allow at some point uh, for, to VVelo, it will give power to VVelo voters to decide what the emission rate is itself. So we, we're calling it the Velo Fed, which basically makes VVelo voters the, the the Federal Reserve or the Central Bank of, of Velodrome, and they will define what the right level is, right? To so the reason why I like that, him saying that they designed it in such a way for the V Velodrome holders to be like their own central bank, like the Federal Reserve, is because, again, proving to you guys that if you go on Velodrome Finance right now and provide liquidity on liquidity pools and whatnot, again, remember, you get paid out in emissions on Velodrome and Aerodrome. Um, they determine the rewards that they get. They determine how much money they make. And I think that that is astronomical. I mean, it's, it's gives, it literally gives the power to the individuals that are embedded into the DeFi ecosystem and willing to learn about it. And here at CyperX, we've been capitalizing on Velodrome. We've been capitalizing on Aerodrome, right? We've been taking charge of these opportunities. And you can see that individuals like senators, congressmen are buying up Velodrome. We're not making this up. That's why we got involved into Velodrome because we saw, we followed the money, you know? So, I just thought that that was a cool video clip to share. Now, this video clip um, is going to be a individual from Wisdom Tree, and he goes on to confirm. Let me just see my notes. He goes on to confirm that retail are the only ones involved, collectively speaking, in the market to a certain degree. I don't think that that's the case. I think there are some institutions, but the majority of investors right now at two point what two point some odd trillion dollars as of time of recording this is majority retail. Big, large institutions on a granular scale for a fact are not here yet. That is transparent in the total cryptocurrency market cap. If they were, it would be significantly higher, right? And he confirms this. And then he says at the end of his statement that he believes institutions will be the next wave. And this is from two months ago and only has 430 views. Mind you, you know, there's crypto investors in this space that have millions of subscribers and talk bullshit all day on their channels, right? When in reality, here you have a traditional financial player with only 430 views. So it just goes to show that not a lot of people are tapped into the videos that we share inside the CyberX community. So let's take a second and uh, let's let me share my screen and then let's listen to this one. On the blockchain, 
it's a consortium of 20 of the largest global banks. Um, what all you can say about the, the US launch is it's an extremely important milestone on this journey of normalizing the asset class as well as um, bringing things onto the blockchain in general. And so I think it's very, very constructive. Still, almost all of the money is retail. Um, which is interesting. Um, even with BlackRock's great success, almost all that money is retail. There's just inherent demand. Usually in investing, retail gets the last look. Here they've gotten the lion's share of the benefit of a $60,000 coin, which is nice for retail to be a winner. Is there anything else you can tell us about the investors in spot Bitcoin ETFs? Um, you know, all investors want the same thing. This is um, better returns with less risk, right? That's pretty much what investing is. There definitely is a, um, a growing desire for um, alternative alternatives to fiat um, because of the debasement. So um, it was a very well-constructed Bitcoin exposure, having so limited supply. It's really worked beautifully. In fact, if you think about the one-year, three-year, five-year, 10-year, and 15-year return on Bitcoin, it is the best performing asset class. So that alone is how you know that drives money that drives investors it's done better than private equity i'm expecting the next wave will be institutional money to come in so much to unpack from that video breakdown okay first how do you guys feel about what he said confirming in my personal opinion that banks aren't here yet he literally said that retail has the upper hand over financial institutions he called us winners like pretty much <laughs> I'm just it's, saying, man. Uh, I don't know what else y'all want him to say, man. Like he, he pretty much like, just said it. CNN, Fox News, ABC, all the fear mongering mainstream platforms, they will never play this video. They will never play this gentleman's words to you to let you know as retail traders that you right now have the upper hand on banks. And that's because Unlike financial institutions that have to meet a bunch of regulatory requirements, the average retail trader does not in order to onboard into this space. It is actually quite simple after watching a couple of video breakdowns on the internet as a retail trader to onboard into this space. The, after you've KYC'd onto a centralized exchange, it's very, rel it's very relatively easy to buy a digital asset. For a financial institution, that is not the case. That is 110% not the case. And so you have the advantage inherently. Right. And if you're not going to take advantage of that, trust and believe there are many other individuals out there like myself, like Kevin, like Aqua, like other people listening into this conversation that will. And I guarantee you, when we look back five, 10 years from now, granted, I've just read documents to you guys that believes that the short term is still going to be choppy. It's still going to be troublesome. We're still going to have to deal with headaches. But if you're mature and you understand how nascent this space is, that's OK. Deal with it. Accept the volatility. Stomach the risk. It's part of this game. And if you can, you will probably most likely look back by 2030 and be like, holy shit, I'm so happy that I stomached that and I did research and I found projects that are actually connected with large institutions and whatnot. You're probably going to turn around and thank yourself. And if you and if you get shaken out because you're fearful, because you're not tapped into the right communities, you're not tapped into the right information and you get shaken out, you're probably going to be that person by 2030 that beats themselves up. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. You're going to be that person that's like, yeah, I held I held a 500 Apple stock back in early 2000, but dang, I sold it because somebody told me it was stupid. That's, that's going to be, that's <laughs> that's going to be you in 2030, you know? That, <laughs> so I'm just saying, not financial advice. Anyways, um, so I wanted to unpack that. And then last but not least, he also mentioned the, de the devaluation of your currencies. He mentioned and confirmed something that I tell my followers, and it's that these banks know that the devaluation of their of currency is happening, that lower yield is dying, right? They know that they can get higher yield. I've now proven that to you guys by showing you all that SBI made 172% in quarter two. They know. They know. And so if one bank knows, trust and believe, they're all in on it. They all freaking know. If you don't think they're all having little tiny meetings behind closed doors, telling each other high five and like, yeah, we made 172, you know? If you don't think it's happening, you're dead wrong. It is. It is 110%. So, um, all right, let's go into the next segment. This is These are going to be the last couple of video clips and, and things that I have, and then I'm going to give my voice a break because I've been cooking. So check this one out. Let's go over to this one. We got this gentleman right here. He talks about how DeFi 
currently is still hard to use. To full circle, because I always like to full circle in my talks. Remember the, um, the PDF I just showed you guys from Convera, I think it was called, where they're projecting 22 million users in DeFi by 2028, which is a significant increase from the 7.5 million that currently exists today, which is why I recommend you at least at a minimum start educating yourself on DeFi. You don't have to go and deploy into DeFi, but you could take the Wealth28 Club course and actually learn about DeFi. So that way, when it's time to deploy, maybe you want to be a little bit more comfortable in the regulatory environment. Maybe you don't want to risk the assets in your cold storage. At least when you're ready, you have the education. This is why I'm attempting to show you guys that it's important to get educated now to join like-minded communities that are tapped into this type of stuff because this is the future. And if you want to deny and fight that, again, you're fighting you're fighting freaking the natural the naturalistic revolution evolution of our lifetime. Like if you want to do that, you know, fights on you. Probably going to lose that fight. So this gentleman goes on to just talk about this. I want you guys to um, listen to that. Let me share screen. Let's pull this up. I hate that stream yard. You have to share independent screens. Hold on. All right. Let's see if you guys can hear it. The process of using DeFi a bit easier. So Web3 is also challenging to understand. So that's why we're here. And crypto custody. How many? So Web is to kind of help make the, the process of using DeFi a bit easier. We're good. Almost kind of the, the the fun part i like working on extremely and investing in very very difficult problems so the challenge of D, of uh, DeFi right now is that it's still relatively difficult for people to use most people right now are more comfortable using centralized exchanges um our goal really is to kind of help make the the process of using DeFi a bit easier so web okay so the only reason why i played that clip is so that you can hear from somebody else's perspective that has many more credentials than you and i and most of the people listening is he said that a lot of the reasons why a lot of people haven't adopted DeFi is because it's still relatively challenging and that's a fact if you don't go out and take a course like the wealth 28 club or go and do extensive research independently on youtube or go and join another course i'm not going to knock other people's courses out there but you're probably going to end up losing money you're probably going to end up getting burnt you're probably going to end up getting scammed. You're probably going to end up doing some stupid stuff with your money that you could have avoided if you just educated yourself properly by tapping into the Wealth28 Club or doing extensive research on your own, <clears throat> which again, good luck. But he's still just confirming the perspective that DeFi is still hard. And you can see in the background, I just thought that I'd throw that in there. The reason why I even brought this up is because Zodia Custody is here. And if you've been on this call so far, you just already saw my connection with Zodia Custody and Copper and Banks and Soy. Okay. So, um, but I want to show you guys that this is actually starting to change. This is actually starting to transition to full circle back to my original statement that I think even in the short choppiness of the, the market volatility that we could see, zooming out long term, this is just confirming my, my perspective that we're going to see a rising equity curve and the digital assets that survive over the next you know couple of years. So this is a um, fundamental piece that I posted on August 8th. So, you know, just yesterday. Um, and it's a fundamental piece that talks about OKX. Now, OKX has just announced the integration of OKX Wallet with its Instadap. And so what this feature does is it not only enhances user experience, but it also ensures that users are always up to date with the latest DeFi innovation. Thanks to Instadap's upgradable smart contract technology, it makes the process of individual users onboarding into DeFi much more easy and seamless, right? I'm not going to bore you guys. I'm not going to bore you guys to death and read this. Oh, sorry. I'm not sharing my screen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. That's okay. Thank you so much. I forgot. See, that's why I don't like it. You got to reshare a whole new screen. Oh, crap, right? <laughs> All right, so here's that, here's that fundamental piece. But the reason why, again, I'm trying to piece this together for you guys is we have individuals saying that this space is still hard. But then we're starting to see the developments unfold. Now, let me show you guys a individual representative who used to work at Ripple. His name is Thomas Cohen. He is now currently, if I'm not mistaken, let's see his role. It says here in the bottom of the video, uh, Thomas Cohen. I believe he's the CEO of something now. Hold on. Um, I don't remember who he is. He's the CEO of something now. But anyways, he used to, oh, here it is. He used to work at the Federal Reserve. He used to work at Ripple. And he is now the tokenization lead, I believe, at Galaxy. Okay. So again, he has credentials. So let's listen to him. Again, this video is from July 19th, 2024. Shout out 
<coughs> to the Cyprex researchers who are always tapped in, you can see only 112 views on this video, people. Okay, this is embarrassing. There's 560 million people active in crypto. And this is, again, the reason why I'm showing you this is because this is stuff the mainstream will never show you. They're going to constantly fudge you. They're going to constantly show you price action. They're going to constantly tell you, oh my gosh, market's going up, market's going down, manipulating you. Zoom out and understand that this space is for a fact developing. Let's listen to what he says. I got to reshare my screen real quick. He talks about... <clears throat> He talks about how this space is developing, everything is changing, regulation is positive, and that over the long term, this is only going to continue to grow. So just take a second and let's listen to what he has to say. <clears throat> we need to be able to have that risk-free rate as well. Um, and then, of course, on the regulatory side, the Bitcoin ETF in the United States has really taken off. Um, when all 11 were approved in January, um, as you all know, the, the inflows broke every record of any ETF in history by a long shot. Um, and every estimate was completely blown out of the water. So the demand here is, is very, very high. And we've seen, um, similar indications from the, the Ethereum ETF, which, um, as you all know, just through the, through the different rumors, the, it looks more and more like the, it'll likely be approved in, in the, in the coming months. Um. And I think we also have to um, have to really credit the industry as a whole in terms of how much better the user experience, how much better the technology, and how much better the underlying applications that we all use in this space have improved since the previous cycle. Um, and so I think that's really one of the, the bigger bigger differences here is just thinking back to 2020, the different apps we used on the, on the DeFi side or on the institutional side, it's just very different. It's much more, much more user friendly and much more likely to, um, to make it easier for people to make the, make the jump from TradFi to, to crypto. Um, I also think that the regulatory side has uh, begun to shift. I mean, as, as an American, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, I'm, I'm in Frankfurt here for, for many reasons, but one of which is we've seen so much capital flow to the EU because of Mika and because of the power of it, and finally being able to be given rules of the road in a way that um, on the other side of the Atlantic, we're very much still uh, still deciding and, and in you know the discussion phase of of um, of creating the regulations that make sense for this industry. So it's very clear that while we have a long way, um, that progress is is very much happening, and we we see that as a large indication of of the direction that we see this going so that's all that's all really what what makes this year different from previous cycles and i think it's important to note that i don't mean to indicate that from here it's all up and to the right i mean anyone who's been in this space long enough knows that we definitely it'll go down again but what's important is that when things are going up we go two steps forward because we know that eventually we'll also go one step back so Right. So, you know, like I mentioned, lots to unpack there, but just bottom line to confirm regulation is developing. The landscape is maturing. Even if we experience short term volatility, remember this gentleman used to work at Ripple. He used to work at Federal Reserve. He used to work at Paxos. Now he's the head, I believe, of tokenization at Galaxy. Um, he's just confirming on stage. And again, a lot of people are never going to see this video because it's never going to reach the mainstream. They're going to get shaken out when large representatives like this are telling you, like, long term, it's up, you know, it's up. And if you can't see that, then you're going to get left behind. Literally, they've told you this in clips that we've just shown you. So um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to unpack a little bit of that. I had another video clip of an individual um, talking about how they're building DeFi ecosystems on the XRPL. Um, and I that interesting if you guys want to you guys want to roll that if you want to unpack you think that i've shared yeah i want to unpack a little bit what he just said though too because like i'm noticing the narrative of this next bull run being just completely different than others and it's gonna happen here soon you know what i mean like that that's like that other document that you had read like this is and the, the excitement that i could see like in this man's soul and the glow he has man like this is this is for sure happening, and those the those that are tapped in, they know, they can see it. They, it's you know, <laughs> you can read about listen, it everywhere. Listen, 
Listen to what he says right here. Listen to what he says right here about all banks eventually in the future coming on chain, right? Like this is just, again, just to reiterate back to what I've said is that once one of these banks like migrates, they're all going to, or else they're going to not be able to keep up with competition. If SBI is making 172% per quarter, but Bank of America is only making 16% per quarter, Bank of America is going to fall behind. Not only that, but their clients are going to want to transition over to a financial institution that's performing well and has better options for their clients to invest in. So it's all a competitive landscape that a lot of people aren't seeing behind the scenes because most people in general lack financial literacy. Like most people don't even have a thousand dollars saved to their name, like let alone have money to invest into crypto. So it's um it's a very interesting turning point right now where if you're not trying to educate back to reiterate, you know, we're in an age of information. It's time to stop thinking that everything is a conspiracy theory and starting to dive a little bit deeper. Whether it's you do your own research or you join a community of like-minded individuals like us here at Cyprex, there's many others out there, but I got to toot our own horn, you know. Um, and we're dropping gems like this. This is this is all facts, guys and gals. This is all stuff that's not opinionated. This is all stuff that's happening, and it's all happened within the last year. Mind you, the environment that's been created over the past couple of trading sessions with this most re recent market downturn and all of the just bullcrap dis distractions, like who cares about the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit, lawsuit? Everybody was tripping out about that yesterday. Oh my gosh, posting everybody making videos, XRP to $100. Like if you're still on that, following that crap in the market, even if you are an XRP holder, like who cares? Who That shit is so 2019 back when we were locked down in our houses and stuff. Now it's about opportunity. How can you make money in the now? Stop being so fixated on the bull crap that's here to distract you, you know? And there's a lot of it in this market. So don't get me wrong. It's not a bad thing if you've fallen victim to it or if you still do. But where it becomes a bad thing is if you don't try to change it. If you don't understand that there are communities out there that are here to help you, yeah, okay, we charge a fee. But that's because I sit my ass in my computer 12 hours a day for my community. You know what I'm saying? And if you expect me to do that for free, you're out of your damn mind. Just like the other gentleman here, right? You know? But the information that I provide, it's valuable and it's really educational and it will really allow you to level the F up. And if you want that, it's there for you, you know? So you, you you have to want that for yourself though. Again, we're in an age of information and if you're remaining to follow ignorant people in this space, it's a personal choice. You That's know? facts. Yo, and to bring it back to, you know, <clears throat> you know, digesting what this man was saying, let's not forget what I had shared a few weeks ago about, what Marshall Hainer has, you know, those three patents with KYC regulation compliance built into the chain and, you know, the web auth wallet, you know, metal, the, the metal chain itself is all open source. It could be white labeled. So like, you know, hypothetically, for example, Bank of America could come in, adopt that chain, adopt the web auth wallet, make it look like it's completely Bank of America and you're not even going to see the web auth wallet logo like it's not even going to look like it's affiliated but it's running on the web auth wallet running on metal so let's not forget about that you know what i mean especially you know when you had showed the uh the velodrome connections because velo velodrome has connections with um with uh with uh with marshall and 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 metal l2 so you know i mean it's there it's 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 right in front of us so yeah, hundred percent. I like that perspective too. I like how on all these talks, it doesn't matter which week it is, like they always connect to each other. You know, they always connect in such a way where it's like, I don't know. I, I'm just a person that where we. Let me put it this way: real recognizes real. Okay, and if you've been a follower of mine, or you're even inside the Cypress community, like you know the, the stuff that we're talking about. What we do is like. It's real wholehearted information, looking out for people, really teaching people about the financial system the proper way, ins and outs of central banks, monetary policy, all this stuff. Like using, we don't hype up any indicators. We don't hype up any price predictions. It's just a real community. And like the stuff that we share, take it upon yourself to just go enlighten yourself further, even if you don't join us, you know, it's time to really level up and stop focusing on missing out on opportunities, number one, but also feeding into this narrative that you're going to become rich overnight by doing nothing. You know, that's so dead. You have to do something. If you're just watching YouTube videos and you think you're going to become wealthy in this market, you're going up against people like institutional scalper, like myself, who will sit here for 12 hours a day doing research, tapped into institutional Delta zones, making money. Like last week, I made $30,000. You know, if you can't keep up with that, there's a reason. And it's because you're not tapped into the right information. The right information is there for you. 
again, you just have to want it for yourself, man. I can't stress enough. Um, so I want to I want to play this last one where he talks about all banks coming on chain. And I guess I'll end it there because we've we've almost gone on for two hours. I had more stuff to drop, but maybe I'll just make a YouTube video. I will play this last one after this guy, where the guy that's building out EVM side chains on the XRPL, he talks about how Ripple and XRP have also been working with central banks and financial institutions, right? And then I want to just show you guys a clip that I found from a video that only has like 60 views where Ripple was um, projected as the CBDC platform of the United States. So I'll make that last connection and then I'll part ways. But yeah, so check this piece out right here. Yeah, for the potential of the industry. Um, what can we do as an industry today to make sure that that vision is really brought forward into the 2020s instead of into the 2030s and beyond? And to me, these, these aren't rocket science. Um, but I think a lot of the time, especially when we're talking with large traditional financial institutions, people talk about how this technology is truly revolutionary and can transform the way that we store and move and access value. And while that's true, what's important is to have the conversation be about how it's evolutionary, how we can help these large institutions make small steps every year over time so that a decade from now they can look back and say, oh, wow, suddenly half of our half of the of the financial transactions that we engage in are actually on chain and they wouldn't even realize. Okay. I want to play that for you guys one time because I want you to understand the importance of what I said to you guys previously and what he just said. I just mentioned to you guys a second ago that by 2030, don't be the type of person that looks back and says, damn, I missed out on the opportunity of a lifetime because I thought this was all just a scam. Da, 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 right? Don't be that guy. Don't be that lady. Don't tap in. Listen to what he says about how banks are literally going to do the same exact thing. Look, listen. Map for the potential of the industry. Um, what can we do as an industry today to make sure that that vision is really brought forward into the 2020s instead of into the 2030s and beyond? And to me, these, these aren't rocket science. Um, but I think a lot of the time, especially when we're talking with large traditional financial institutions, people talk about how this technology is truly revolutionary and can transform the way that we store and move and access value. And while that's true, what's important is to have the conversation be about how it's evolutionary, how we can help these large institutions make small steps every year over time so that a decade from now they can look back and say, oh, wow, suddenly half of our half of the of the financial transactions that we engage in are actually on chain. And Oh, wow. So that we we can look back in 10 years time and say, oh, wow, half of the financial transactions that we engage in are now on chain. Do you understand how much money that is? If half of the financial system migrates over to Web3 technologies, I don't think a lot of people understand how much money that is, which is the goal right now that's happening. And he said, he, this is no moon boy hype channel. He said, every single year, year after year, incremental developments are going to unfold. And eventually we will get to a point in time where the entire half of the financial stack will sit on chain. You don't wanna be looking back, regretting not being a part of that transition. You wanna be a part of the, per the community, the individuals that are tapped into this stuff, where I've shown you from the start of this call, right? We're tapped into tokens that are partnering with financial institutions that aren't just XRP, right? If you're just focused on XRP, <laughs> Tap in, there's so many other assets out there. It's not going to be one ring to rule them all. In the Cyprex community, we're not biased. We're not this biased community, this bandwagon community that doesn't seek out opportunities. We're tapped in. You know, so if you guys want to tap in with us, we'd love to have you. I'm going to give my voice my voice a rest. If, if these other gentlemen want to um, present or share any more information, I'll open the floor to that. But shout out to the 1,700 people that are tapped into today's call. Really do appreciate it. Make sure that you guys go follow Mr. Aqua on the X space. He's also got a YouTube platform. He's also one of our CyberX mentors. Um, I think Kevin hopped off. So I would have given a shout out to Kevin before he jumped off. But yeah, I'm solid, man. Mr. Aqua, what you got for the, for the people, for the lovely people listening in?